Love it or hate it, the notch is something that we're gonna see a lot more of, especially in 2018. More and more manufacturers are bringing it out. So what was originally first started, I think, by a central phone, they had that little camera notch there. Uh, then Apple decided they would also release a notch phone. Then we've got other manufacturers copying, including a Zeus here. So this is the Zenfone 5, and it has a 6.2 full HD notch display. So it's gonna be, for me, a bit of a learning curve. It's gonna be my first notch phone. Now, they didn't make any other poor design choices. Now, it's a bit of a compromise with the notch, but at least they didn't skimp on other things. So we still have a micro SD card slot on this and we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so that's good news. This is powered by the Snapdragon 636, four gigabytes of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of storage. The battery is 3,300 milliamp hours. Now, Azus promises that this has quite a decent and very capable camera setup on it. So we've got dual cameras on the rear, so one's eight megapixels, the other is 12. Now that main sensor, it also has uh, optical image stabilization for access and EIS gyro stability too on that. It's got AI scene detection mode and the secondary camera, which is that eight megapixel one, also helps out with bokeh blurred backgrounds. A front facing eight megapixel selfie cam on here. So let's get this one unboxed and check it out. Okay, so right here at the top, it says we love photo. Um, that should say we love photos, shouldn't it? But anyway, so what we have inside this, so this looks like this is going to be all our paperwork. Okay, so there's the SIM tool. Um, oh, we've got a case. That's great. Always good to have a case here. And that's one of those clear cases, so one of those TPU style ones. So it's a relatively cheap case you can see. It doesn't cover the buttons, but of course there's cutouts for it and the fingerprint reader. And from the manufacturer, it'll be an absolute perfect fit. Now I would love to see all manufacturers doing this, at least giving us a cheap first case we can use straight away out of the box. So there is a quick little user guide in here and that just goes over things. So there's your SIM cards. You've got to put in two nano SIMs or you've got to give up, of course, one of those nano SIMs for an SD card. And you notice here too, it's just talking about NFC. So yes, this does have NFC support, this phone. So we just get the phone out of the way for a second and look at what else we have in the box. Okay, so I've got a lot of things in here actually. So there's the cable, so that's type C. The charger here, a little hard to see, but this is five volts, two amps, so 10 watts maximum. Now it will support the phone quick charge three, so you can get up to 18 watts maximum charging rates if you use, of course, another charger, not this included one. And we also get some in-ear headphones. Now this is great to see because a lot of manufacturers are now skimping on this and they don't include these in the box anymore. So it just comes in this little protective slip. So very nice design. Wow, that is nice in hand. So the back of it has 2.5D glass and I believe it is Gorilla Glass 4 they are using. Rear fingerprint reader. Dual tone LED flash, both of the cameras here. So the main sensor is 12 megapixels. It has an f1.8 aperture. The auxiliary sensor is eight megapixels. And this one has an f2.0 aperture, just like the front facing camera. And with the phone powered off, of course, at the moment, you can hardly see that notch at all. So what the notch has in it is the earpiece. And then to the left of it is the proximity and ambient light sensors. And then the right, the camera module. The buttons on the right side, these are made out of metal. The frame is all metal and it does have nice rounded edges. In hand feels really good. This is a premium phone. Build quality is excellent. Along the bottom, you can see we've got a loudspeaker, microphone, type C port and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there. Now you can just see just here, the antenna line. There's one here and one just on the side. On the left, you'll find the SIM tray. Now it doesn't have any dust proofing, so there's no rubber gasket on this. It will take a micro SD card and nano SIM, or a micro SIM and nano SIM. Along the top, we just have two antenna lines and then a secondary mic. There's actually a third microphone as well here you see on the top left hand side. So the Zenfone 5 weighs 169 grams and is 8.2 millimeters thick. Now that's without the camera bump with the camera bump, then it is 8.8 .8 millimeters. So very quick size comparison with two 5.99 inch mobile phones here. So on the left, we've got the Redmi Note 5 from Xiaomi, 
And the Z phone there you can see is quite a bit shorter than that, but it's not quite as short as the Mi Mix 2S on the right. So in hand, this phone feels great. It definitely feels premium. I like the weight of it, the balance of it, the curved edges as well make it all comfortable and the way that glass is reflecting there. So let's just power this on for the first time. So there we go, straight away, you just notice that notch. Uh, that's gonna take a little while for me to get used to this, being my first phone here. And I won't go through all the setup here, that's pretty obvious. We'll just skip ahead now and have a look at the stock apps. But before I do, I just wanted to point out something with this IPS panel. You can see, especially with the notch here, just on that corner there, you can see how there's a bit of what I like to call shadowing. It's not bleed, it's more just like a darker patch of there. It's just manufacturing. You notice it there at the top. So the top bezel, yes, it is quite slim. And on my unit, it's particularly bad here. Just along the bottom, you can see all of that shadowing that's happening. And of course, those super rounded edges are gonna take a while for me to get used to. So the setup didn't take too long. It's your typical Android Oreo setup. So you have gotta go through a few things extra. They ask you from some Zen storage thing and Google Drive offer, but that's about it. So these are the apps we have on Zen UI, what they've got pre-installed. So it's not as bad as the Zenfone 3 Ultra that I looked at. It was just cram full of so much rubbish on here. Okay, we've got Google apps on there and the Asus folder. Um, oh, that just pops up. So I, I don't like being nagged with things, but this is just of course gonna happen in the beginning. Okay, the on-screen keys here you can see, navigation buttons there at the bottom. So in the Asus folder, web storage, it says a few bloatware applications on here. I mean, selfie master, mobile manager, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's one of those antivirus things, I think. So yeah, there's just a, a, a little bit. Now I know I'm ranting on a little bit about the notch, but just have a look at the way the time is aligned here, right to the right. I don't know why they have done that. So these are things that, minor little things like this that actually bother me. And look, when you swipe down, watch what happens. See how the time actually moved then a little bit? So it moved to the left a tiny little bit. So obviously there's just a few things with the UI, the adjustments they have to make to cater for that notch. So the phone is running Android 8.0 and you get approximately 52 gigabytes free on first boot. So here's the Antutu score. This is excellent for this chipset. In fact, the highest I have seen, this has come out higher than the Redmi Note 5. Now I did enable what's called the AI Boost. So that is on. And what that really basically does, it's not proper AI, I don't think. This is just marketing hype and gimmicks that they are using. I mean, they even call the charging AI charging. But what this is doing, I believe, is just maxing out the CPU governor. So it's just in a performance mode and holding those core clocks up really high. Here is the DRM info. A lot of people have been asking for this recently. So if you need to read all of this, of course, just pause right now. And treble check. So it does support treble being Android 8, but it does not support both system partitions A and B for seamless updates. Okay, for speakers, we've got that downwards firing speaker that you have at the bottom that I showed you at the start of the video. And there's also one here, so front firing. Now this front firing one, like other ones that also double up the earpiece as a loudspeaker, it's only really just mids and treble where you get more kind of subs coming out of that one. So I'll test it out now, 100% volume, and we'll have a listen to how it sounds. So yes, it is loud, but at 100% volume, it does distort, and there's quite a bit of distortion coming from the earpiece front-facing loudspeaker. So I will quickly test out PUBG here, you can see. Now I set it to the high settings, the highest I can, and the high frame rate, so up to 60 frames per second. So it is really smooth, and you can see with the map here that at least at the moment, doesn't seem to have any massive lag. And yes, it's running this game perfectly fine. You zoom in and there is no obvious lag to me. There's a couple of little stutters that you always expect to see. And note that it doesn't have the notch there, that it gets rid of it. You've got the black borders either side. It depends on the apps, of course, the support, but we still, of course, get the corners cut off from those super rounded corners that Asus have gone with. So in general, the performance is good here with Zen UI. I have noticed that sometimes when you swipe down here to get the notifications, there's a tiny little bit of a stutter there. Now there have been three over the air updates and it still hasn't addressed the way that that clock is with it right up against on the right hand side. 
So we'll take a look at the camera application here. They have hyped up the camera as being quite a decent camera here. Now we'll take some sample photos and video and show you those in just a second. Well, we'll go through some of the modes here. So first we've got the 12 megapixel sensor, which is the standard one, the one that you're gonna use all the time, that has the four axis ISO. And clicking this here is a slightly wider angle. Now you can see, hopefully here, it's got a bit of a fish eye effect to it, that lens, because it's slightly wider. And that's just the standard one there, which doesn't have that, of course. Now you've got your various different modes here. For example, this is the portrait mode. So depth effect with the blurred background. And I'll just get out of that and quickly show you to some of the other modes. So if you swipe down, that brings up the filters. And if you swipe up here, you go into the different various modes we've got here. So we've got pro mode. This is just the interesting ones here I'll show you. So we've got control of the white balance exposure, ISO, shutter rate, and your focus. So that's great to have that there. And we've also got super resolution. So what that's gonna do is just stitch together with various images, a 49 megapixel photo. So you can capture maybe a little bit more detail, of course, when you crop in. I will test that and give you a sample of that as well. Back into auto mode. So we do have slow motion and the different ones we've got here, frame rates wise, we've got HD, so 720p at 240 frames per second or HD at 120 frames per second. Then for your standard video shooting modes, we do have 60 frames per second, 1080p, and then all the way up to 4K, 30 frames per second. So this is a sample shot with the front-facing camera. You get 1080p max, and you see it does have electronic image stabilization, so it's quite good. It's taking out the shakes with me walking along here, and it's doing a reasonably good job here. You can see there aren't many details there. In fact, the sky has not been captured at all, but that is very common. So this has been shot on the main camera sensor, so that 12 megapixel one with an f1.8 aperture. It has four axis optical image stabilization, four stops, and in 4K it doesn't seem to have any electronic image stabilization. The focus is good so far, my testing seems to be pretty much spot on. No real focus hunting issues, anything like that. And you can see the optical image stabilization working when I'm walking along right now, you can see it shaking around a little bit. So not quite as smooth as electronic image stabilization only. Now sample with the wide angled lens. So this one is only 1080p maximum, 30 frames per second from that eight megapixel sensor with the f2.0 aperture. But you will notice that the stability, because it is in 1080p and it is only electronic image stability, not optical, but it actually comes out a lot more stable here, the footage. I have tested out the fingerprint reader and the face unlocking. Face unlocking seems to work quite well. It's quickly, the fingerprint reader as well is very quick and it is a always on sensor. And if you're into this sort of thing, there's also the Zen emojis. Uh, not really a big fan of this, but it's not quite as good as Samsung's offering. I found that the eyes and the mouth doesn't seem to be quite as good, the tracking. All right, so that's the Zenfone 5. So to quickly recap here, we've got a very good build quality. It's premium. The glass on the rear is super slippery, so be careful putting it on a table because it will slip off. Fingerprint reader is always on and it's very fast and it unlocks straight away basically. So that is good. Face unlocking as well is quick in my testing there. So camera performance, we can take portrait photos. They look okay to me. Some of the stitching isn't quite perfect. That's very 
frequent that it happens with a lot of other manufacturers as well. Daylight photos look good. Low light, well, it's not going to win any awards. It's not the best there, but it certainly is better than some mobile phones. So for a premium mid-ranger, I feel it's offering quite a bit here. But yes, I'm going to mention it. You know I am. The notch. Now, it's not a good design move here. I know I've ranted on about it, but I feel it's just a mistake. Why are they following this stupid trend? Because the top bezel, if they want to slim it down, it can, and I know it can be done right. We've seen it with Xiaomi's Mi Mix 2S and the Mi Mix 2, that you can have a slim top bezel. And you don't have to resort to a compromise like the notch, which is rather ugly. I'm not a fan of the hugely rounded corners either. And I do have on my screen some what I would say like shadows or darkening around that I showed you in the beginning of this video, which is not good to see. We don't want to have this, especially with the price of this phone. Apart from that, yes, the color reproduction of the screen is good. It is super bright. So it's looking decent, but it's really whether you want the notch or not. And for me, it's a little bit hard to live with considering we can't hide it. Where's the option to hide it? At least put black uh, either side of it, but you can't do that. Anyway, I will be back for the full review of this one here with the uh, battery life, some more camera performance reviews with photos some samples there and just use it for two weeks. So I hope to catch you then. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more up and coming reviews. Bye for now.